Hi friends, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today we have to discuss about one of the most important concepts in computer organization and architecture is DMA transfer. In DMA concept, so there are three sub-concepts are there. First one is what is DMA? Second one is DMA controller. Third one is DMA transfer. Already first two sub-concepts are discussed in the previous videos. If anybody wants, please refer that two videos in my YouTube channel, Divela Srinivasra. Go to playlist called Computer Organization. Now, in this video, how DMA transfer can be done with the help of block diagram. Generally, a computer system consists of three components. First one is CPU. Second one is random access memory. Third one is IO peripheral devices. Now, the DMA controller can be placed along with these three components in a computer system. Now, the computer system consists of four components as shown in the block diagram. CPU, random access memory, IO peripheral device and DMA controller. Now, CPU and DMA controller are communicated with each other through the data bus and address bus. So, with the help of two buses, both CPU and DMA controller are communicated with each other. Next, how DMA can be initialized? DMA can be initialized by using the CPU. Once the CPU sends the start command control to the DMA controller, then the DMA controller can be initialized through the data bus. Next one, when the IO peripheral device sends a DMA request to the DMA controller, then the DMA controller activates the bus request line and asks the CPU to release the control over the memory buses such as address bus and data bus. After that, CPU replies it through the BG line. BG line means bus grant line. Okay. By setting the bus grant line value is equal to 1 and disable all the buses that is the address bus and the data bus and the control bus that are handled by the CPU. So once the CPU disables all the buses that are handled by it, then the DMA controller is the master of the master of the memory buses. It can manage the memory operations. Now the DMA controller places the current value of the address register on the address bus and initiates the two lines that is read line and write read and write signal lines. Okay. So this can be done once the CPU is hand over the hand over the control over the memory buses such as address bus and a data bus by setting BG value is equal to 1. Okay. Then the DMA controller places the current value of the address register on the address bus and initiates two control signal lines that is read control signal lines and write control signal line. Okay. Here read and write signal lines are bidirectional lines. Bidirectional lines. The direction of the transfer depends on the BG value. Depends on the BG value. So, BG value determines the direction of transfer 
that can be done by the read and write signal lines. If BG value is equal to 0, both read and write lines are the input lines to the DMA controller. Okay? If BG value is equal to 0, these two signal lines are the input lines to the DMA controller. When BG value is equal to 1, these two lines can be act as the output lines. From the DMA controller, whether we have to perform either read operation or a write operation in the random access memory. Next, once the IO peripheral device receives the DMA acknowledgement from the direct memory access controller, it places the word, it places the word in the data bus, in the data bus to perform the write operation or uh, receives a data word from the data bus to perform the read operation. Okay, so that means once the IO peripheral device receives the DMA acknowledgement from the DMA controller, it puts a word in the data bus to perform the write operation or a, or, or a retrieves the word from the data bus to perform the read operation. Here, IO peripheral device and uh, main memory are communicated with each other through the data bus without involvement of CPU. Okay, so this can be done after receiving the DMA acknowledgement from the DMA controller by the IO peripheral device. This IO peripheral device is communicated with the random access memory with the help of data bus without involvement of, without involvement of CPU. Okay, here the direct in the direct memory access, there are uh, two registers are there. First one is word count register. Second one is address register. These are the two registers that are supported by the DMA controller. To select among these two registers, we have to use address select. Okay, we have to use these two lines DS and RS. These two year DS and RS lines are used for selecting the register that are available in the DMA controller. What are the registers that are available in the DMA controller? Address register, word count registers. Okay, so to select these registers, we have to use two input lines one is a DS and the second one is RS. RS means register select, DS means data select. By using these two input lines of the DMA controller, we are selecting the registers, either address register or a word count register. Okay. The address register and the word count registers are the two registers that are supported by the DMA controller. To select these two registers, we are using two lines, DS and RS lines. Okay. Word count register is decremented by 1 and address register is incremented by 1 after each and every word transfer from the IO peripheral devices to random access memory. Okay, so after each and every word transfer of data from IO peripheral devices to random access memory through the data bus, word count register is decremented by 1 and address register is incremented by 1. Okay. For each and every word transfer. Okay. So DMA controller can also check 
whether the word count register reaches the value 0 after decrementing each and every word transfer. After successfully transferring each and every word from IO peripheral devices to random access memory, word count register is decremented by 1. So, DMA controller can check whether the word count register value reaches the 0 or not. Suppose the word count register value does not reach the 0, does not reach the 0, CPU can manage the data transfer between IO peripheral devices to random access memory. Okay. Suppose word count register value reaches the 0, that means the DMA controller disables the bus grant line and hand over the buses to the CPU by enabling the interrupt line. So, this interrupt line can be used if the word count register value reaches the 0, then the DMA controller disables the bus request line by sending the interrupt signal to the CPU. Now, the CPU, the CPU disable the bus grant line and take the control of the buses. That means address bus and data bus. So, this is the operation can be done in DMA transfer. Okay. Here, DMA controller can take uh, DS means data select, RS means register select. This is bus request line and this is bus grant line. This is the interrupt signal. This is a read line. This is a write line. And this is address and this is a data. Whereas the CPU contains interrupt and a BZ bus grant and bus request, read and write signal lines, address and data. Random access memory also contains read line and write line, address and data. So read line and write lines are used for performing either read operation or a write operation on the random access memory. Okay. Address contains the address value. Data contains the data present in a particular address. Okay. In the address bus, we are transferring the addresses from one component to another component. In the data bus, data is transferred between one component to another component. So here, read control signal line and write control signal lines. So these two are used for performing the read operation or write operation by using the read control signal line and the write control signal line. Okay. So this is the operation that can be performed in the DMA transfer. You have to keep in mind, first of all, we have to explain the four components in the computer system. Then, once IO peripheral sends a DMA request to the direct memory access, direct memory access control enables the bus request line and uh, send this request to the CPU. Please hand over the buses that are handled by you. Then CPU replies by setting the BC value is equal to 1 uh, and hand over the buses to the DMA controller. Now the DMA controller places the current value present in the address register on the address bus and enable the read and write lines. Here read and write lines are bidirectional lines. The transfer of direction can be depends on the BG value. If BG value is equal to 0, these two are the input lines for the DMA controller. When BG value is equal to 1, these two lines are output lines from the DMA controller to perform either read operation or a write operation on the random access memory. Now, once the 
DMA acknowledgement send it to the IO peripheral device by the DMA controller. Now IO peripheral device and random access memory are communicated with each other by using the data bus. Okay. After each and every word transfer can be done between IO peripheral devices and the random access memory. Two registers are supported by the DMA controller. To select these two registers, we have to use DS and RS lines. Now, word count register is decremented by 1 and address register is incremented by 1 after each and every word transfer. Okay. After successful transfer of each and every word from IO peripheral devices to random access memory, word count register is decremented by 1. DMA controller can check the word count register value if it reaches the value 0 or not. If it does not reach the value 0, DMA controller can monitor if any require, IO requests coming from IO peripheral devices or not. It is continuously monitors. If there are no a request coming from IO peripheral devices. Now the DMA controller can stop its working and disable the bus grant line and inform the CPU by enabling the interrupt signal line. So please hand over the buses to hand over the please. Uh, I am giving the uh, bus control to you then CPU disables the bus grant signal and it takes the control over the memory buses such as address bus and data bus after receiving the interrupt signal. Okay. So this process is uh, continuously done until all the data present in the all the data is successfully transferred. Okay. Now CPU can hand over the control of the buses from the DMA controller after receiving the interrupt signal. Okay. DMA transfer can be done in several ways. Okay. So there are uh, uh, two applications are also there. The first one is it is used to updating the interactive display of the terminal and second one is it is used to transfer the data in a fastest rate between the magnetic disk and the main memory. Okay. To transfer the data from magnetic disk and the main memory in a fastest rate, we have to use the DMA transfer because in DMA transfer, there is no involvement of CPU so that the data can be transferred from magnetic disk to main memory can be done in a fastest rate. It is also used for updating the display of interactive terminal. In these two applications, DMA transfer can be used. Okay, so this is the description of DMA transfer. Thank you. Thank you one and all for watching this video. If you like this video, please click on the like button and share this video to your friends and classmates. If you have any doubts, please put your doubts in the comment section. I will clarify your doubts. Please subscribe my YouTube channel. So, Divela Srinivasa Rao. Thank you. Thank you one and all for watching this video. Please refer the previous videos DMA and the DMA controller.